what does client site mean? Client site generally means that those people aren't even working in your offices, they're working at the client's site. And what we see in a lot of federal contracting is that they'll have, they'll have your employees at a government facility. Maybe they're at NASA, maybe they're at Cork, Fort Campbell running the mail room, wherever it is, what they're saying is, hey, we're providing office space for this person, so you don't need to provide office space. Sometimes they'll provide computers and other access. So you hardly have any cost to that person other than you got to find them, right? You got to, you've got recruiting costs. You've got background checks sometimes. And um, sometimes people have sign on bonuses. Um, sometimes there are certifications. So overhead is going to be different for different people, um, but I usually tell people, again, if I'm making things up, because I don't have any information, I'm making my best guess, we just want to get this customer, I would probably put 2%, but I'll tell you, I've got even better. If you give them a round number, they think that you didn't analyze it enough. So I tell people, you know, make it sound like you worked on it. If you give them a straight 2%, they think you're making up your price. I know this is ridiculous, but this is how the federal market works. Um, and I think you'll recognize that in some of the discussion because I see some smiles out there. Um, so it's like, maybe you want to make it 1.92 if you want to get closer to 2%. Because what I'm really playing with right now, you can't tell it, but every time I'm doing this, I'm going to end up being, I'm going to end up playing with these rates down here too. And you're going to see it in just a minute. Oh, my goodness. Just a minute ago, we had a rate in the $85 an hour range. Just by changing these two rates, which we have a logical reason to believe, I don't know that you would have any different costs. I can change what I'm going to bill my customer. I will get that customer. I will, will win that project. And every time I win a project, I get better at executing it. I get better at winning and I get better at pricing. So you don't want to like rake yourself over the coals of, oh my gosh, what do I do? We are making stuff up where we're using a methodology to make that up. So let's go back and change client site back to 2%. My $73.12 is going to go to a different number. 73.17, sometimes it makes a difference, sometimes it doesn't. Maybe you're going to say, I need 5% for overhead. Go to 75. Many times, if you're working directly with a government customer, depends on the kind of work. Sometimes they'll just ask you the final billing rate. Until you're working on bigger projects, nobody will really ask you what your billing rates are. But what I really want you to understand is when you do get bigger, you're still going to use the same methodology. So how about I teach you what the methodology is? So every time you price it, you get a chance to think about it and go, oh, my gosh. We just got a bid for one of those type contracts where I need this fancy math. And you'll already be using it as your standard practice. Just like with your capability statement, always have your NAICS code, all your, your cage code, your DUNS number. How do they reach you? What do you do? It's all the same thing, but nobody tells you about the financial side except me. Okay. This next component, by the way, is called GNA, General and Administrative Cost. That's a term that's used in the accounting industry. They'll talk about GNA all day long, and GNA sometimes includes selling expense, but it basically includes what does it cost to run the corporation or its headquarters cost. Okay, when there's only three people in the company, you're doing billable work, you are mainly the headquarters because you're doing all that admin function. So that's why they call it GNA, general and admin work, because somebody's got to do it. Eventually, you want to get to the point where you've got other people doing the work. And so if you bid too low for GNA, you won't be, you'll win contracts but you won't make any money because you'll have to hire administrative people that can't do that job as well as you do. You have to stop and train them. There's all these other reasons. So you want to go in GNA with what I would call a competitive range. I'm just going to give you a percentage. And um, anytime that you needed more information, uh, you can change it around. But I'm just going to say 
Oh, wait, wait. I'm going to make it so it looks like I thought about it. 11.57% for GNA. GNA is the cost of accounting services, accounting software, human resources software, payroll software, legal cost. If you have um, somebody helping you in human resources, um, if you've got banking fees, it's all the cost of the corporation. If you think about it, the reason it doesn't go into overhead is because my people working for me don't care about my banking fees. They care about whether they can do the job with the tools that I gave them to do it. So GNA is down here and I always make it green because it starts with a G. And I always make fringe, by the way, blue because I think of Blue Cross and Blue Shield, even though I can't afford that kind of insurance anymore. Um, so anyway, GNA, I'm gonna say is 11.57. Okay, this profit thing. People say, what should I charge for profit? Should I put 20%? I'm like, not in the government world. Um, most of the time, a profit rate could be anywhere from 6 to 12%. Anything up over 12%, probably not going to happen. Um, I'm just going to put 12% um, just to give you an example. When I did that, so now my billing rate's 20. Oh, I did this wrong. My billing rate's now $71 an hour. So you're saying, Jenny, well, what do you, I, don't, I don't quite get it. How do you come up with that $71 an hour? All I did is we're, a minute ago, I had a one here. I said, I'm gonna pay the guy 50 bucks an hour, or the woman, $50 an hour. That means in order to cover all my costs, my 8% or 9% for fringe benefits, because I'm giving them no leave, and I don't have any 401k, and I don't have any health insurance, That'll be covered with that. I'm putting 5% for overhead because I think that if I had uh, $5,000 or $50,000 I was paying that employee, that I'd probably spend $2,500 a year on giving them office, um, giving them access to my internet, setting up their email, making sure that I do background checks, doing recruiting costs. So you can see this is a total judgment call. You can go up or lower. And with the way I'm showing you this model, I want you to play around with this. I want you to see what happens. I want you to think about what would be a reasonable number because in a lot of ways you are making it up. Okay, my $50,000 an hour person, um, if I have fringe at 8.66, I have overhead at 2%. Think of it as an allowance. Um, my GNA, which by the way, is always calculated on everything else. So everything above that gets GNA. Because every cost that you that you run through your company is going to have some headquarters activity associated, whether whether it's for paying payroll or um, having a bank line of credit or whatever it is. So you definitely want to have those costs in here. And so what this means is when I bill out for that person, I've got to bill out a fifty thousand dollar an hour person. I need to plan that I'm going to have about seventy thousand dollars worth of billing to cover that. However, I choose to change these numbers around, and a lot of times I do stuff just like this. Watch. I'm just going to go down here. And now I could put a different set. I'm going to say, well, what if I have to pay 15% fringe? What if it's 2% um, for that? Maybe I only want GNA to be 11%, um, and my profit, I'm going to say, is 8%. I'm doing the same thing here. I'm referencing those same cells. So what it allows me to do is just play with this. My $50 an hour person is $70.13. Okay, I went to the customer. I was in a meeting and they know the skill level and I've, I've went ahead and shared with them. I've got somebody identified. Um, I think I know what it'll cost. And maybe you went out to salary.com or someplace and figured out what a real a good pay rate is for them. And sometimes in here, I'll also put 2080 hours per year, which is 52 hours, a, 52 weeks a year times 40 hours. And so if you're trying to figure out, well, what is that person? Okay, I can get, I've got somebody that maybe makes $70,000, um, about $70,000. That means I'm going to pay them $33 an hour. I want 15% GNA. I want 2% for that, 8% profit. 
I bill that $36 an hour person out, $33 an hour person out at $46.29. That's what this multiplier thing is. These are just two examples of using different math to get to the same thing. Because if I put 33 up here, 46.29, I'm just trying to create a method. Now, the other thing I would say, if I'm paying somebody $68,000 a year, I would want to make more than that. 1.40, I don't think that if you, I think that if you're going under like uh, one and a half times their rate, my belief is you're not charging enough because you're not going to make any money. You might make a little money, but you're not going to make enough to grow your company. So um, what I would tell people, if I'm making up numbers out of the middle of the air, I might bump this up. You're actually not going to reveal most of the time to your customer what your percentages are because they haven't asked for that information. You're not bidding a huge contract. It doesn't make a difference. And so, you know, it doesn't matter to me whether you say, well, this is 12% profit and this is 12% for fringe. Mathematically, it's not going to have a big impact. So just play around with these things. But let's put 15% fringe, let's put 5% for overhead, and let's put, I don't know, 15% uh, for GNA because it's a lot of your time and your time is very expensive and very important. And maybe I would say 15% um, for profit. And it's just about 1.6. The main thing I want you to do is go back and take a look. And what billing rates you've talked to your customers about, if you take your billing rate, not billing rate, billing rate, divided by your pay rate, and that's their hourly, so 2080, their annual divided by 2080. If this is um, $95 an hour and you're paying them um, $25 an hour, This would be in the commercial world you could get it. You won't win government contracts with that. The difference in winning government contracts is you can win contracts for a lot longer period of time. Um, but maybe, so maybe my, so I probably wouldn't be using three. Um, maybe I'd say 45 an hour is what I'm going to pay that person. And then you could, you could change this around. So it's more like 25%. Um, the other thing is, I think I mentioned you could charge what the traffic will bear. And if everybody else you're competing with has full benefits and you've got somebody that's going to work for you and they're like, I I'm good. I don't have to have all of that. You could do a little bit better than that. So this is just the model and the math. What I'd like to do now is go ahead and wrap up our um, call and then we'll go on to the next session. So hang out with me for a minute. Okay, so everybody, I just showed you a little bit about wrap rates. If this is something that's of interest to you and you want to learn more in depth, I've got something new that I call the Mitch Group, where I'm getting people that are entrepreneurs in federal contracting together and saying, what do you guys need to know and how can I serve you better with that? If you're interested in that, let me know. I'm going to be launching another Mitch Group soon. And um, also, if you need one-on-one -on -one coaching, I actually coach through another group called RSM Federal, and um, that's pretty much twice a month that I would work with you on a specific problem. So um, certainly glad everybody showed up today for Freedom Friday. If you would like a copy of that wrap rate calculator, just email me after the session and I'll be glad to send you that. Thanks so much for being here.